Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends, Romans and countrymen, welcome one, welcome all back to Decidedly Vanilla. My name is Pixel Riffs and welcome back to the museum where we have been doing the work. Ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves a fantastic looking central hall so far. I've been putting a bit more of it together and as you can see the walls have grown significantly, they've expanded upwards, they've doubled in size pretty much, and I'm really happy with how this is going at the moment. We have a ton of these empty spaces, these feel like blank canvas to me, folks. I feel like we can put something interesting up in there, maybe with some, sta some stabs and slayers, you know the stuff, <laughs> you know how we do the slabs and stairs up there, I reckon we can probably put a little bit of fine detail in there, but I don't want to go overboard with it, because as you may have seen if you've been watching my Decidedly Neapolitan series, sometimes putting something like that, some kind of plain surface in amongst all this detail can really help it stand out as a focal point. So I may be thinking about leaving those a little bit more plain. We will see. We will see indeed. But now we have ourselves a bit more of a great hall kind of vibe up in here. I still have to kind of put the walls up there as well. But I think this is coming together really well. I think it's probably time to start putting in some of the features that I have been excited about for a while. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to quickly have a sleep while the stars are about to come out. We can watch the sunset from outside. Ah, oh, how lovely. And we can only sleep at night. Ah, these beds. They're so restrictive with my sleep schedule. <laughs> there we go. I can also show you a little bit of the stuff I've been doing around this part of the museum right here because the entrance as always, has remained more or less unchanged. But here, here we have the foundations of something really cool. This is going to be the cafe. All museums should have a cafe. It helps. It really does help. If you're spending a while in a museum, which you should if you go and visit a museum, because let's face it, they have a ton of stuff for you to look around and it's all actually really interesting. I never used to like museums all that much when I was a kid because I didn't appreciate like the the value of some of the stuff that was in there, like the heritage and the kind of historical interest that's present in so many museums, but you need to be spending some time there if you're going to get anything really out of it. And as such, you need a cafe because you need someone to have a snack. So I'm building a cafe right inside the entrance here opposite what's going to be the gift shop. I've moved around some of the chests here as well. So I have this little storage area down here now, which, as you guys will have seen if you've seen the storage episode of Ask a Minecrafter, we can fit an absolute ton of items in here. In fact, I've barely even used a tiny fraction of the storage space. It's just a bit of a pain moving the chests up and down, so I still have the wood stuff in here, which I'm slowly kind of getting rid of. Some stone bits in here with the wool and all of these extra gubbins. But I will get rid of that. I have mob drops and stuff in there, valuable stuff in there, and... What's in this one? Oh yeah, all the books that I got from the Stronghold. I was like, why is this chest just here on its own, sitting alone by itself? So, yeah, and here we're going to have the gift shop. There's going to be bookshelves and stuff around here. I'll probably do something like this and maybe put one of my little custom bookshelves in the middle there with armor stands and stuff, but we'll do that another time. This is going to be a counter space. There's going to be little things around here. There'll be little chests that people can buy souvenirs from should they want to. But yes, this is going to be the cafe. I really like the way this turned out. I kind of got a modern feel for the floor, but you've seen those black and white checkerboard floors way too much. In any kind of food related builds, they tend to happen because that's that's the pattern you get on some kind of chef uniforms. Like they have the checkered trousers, you know, helps to spot stains and things like that, helps to keep it clean. I thought I'll put one one floor down and underneath some glass, so it doesn't quite look like you're about to play chess on it, but it looks like it's kind of a piece of interest. And then up here with a nice modern spiral staircase, I thought that worked out pretty well with the quartz and the black stained glass, because I wanted there to be a window you could look out of, because nothing is nicer than sitting by a window to eat your lunch and looking out at what's going on outside, especially if there's a nice natural garden out here like the one I started making and didn't really finish, <laughs> but we'll get around to that as well. So yeah, up here's going to be another kind of little cafe level. I'm considering putting a little bridge over here to like a second floor of the gift shop or maybe this can be kind of visitor information or something like that. I don't know. Haven't really planned it all out yet but it's coming along. It really is. Like this this area had virtually nothing in until yesterday when I started cracking on with this and I'm really happy with how it's gone. Sheep farm over here is producing nicely. I haven't got all the colours of sheep just because it's a little bit of a pain to move it up move them up and down the kind of tiers of the sheep farm. But we've got a few of the basic colours up in there and hopefully we will 
continue production on those and then we can start wireframing out the museum. But I figured this week I would get a bunch of the Great Hall done so we could proceed with what I have planned for today's video. Today I am honouring a new reward on my Patreon page and I've kind of switched it up from one of the old rewards which was just to kind of get a shout out at the end of a video. I used to do, the, do those on my single player series and I have kind of stopped doing my single player series recently for reasons of time and also because I'm doing a lot of the stuff I want to do on my single player series in this series. The museum was always a single player project for me so it doesn't have a huge opportunity for collabs in terms of building but obviously I'm going to be collaborating with people when we need to get supplies for the museum but I figured we may as well do pretty much everything on this series on DV because it may as well be a single player series and a collab series kind of at the same time that's always how I've handled it so today I've changed the patreon pledges to if you donate to me if you donate more than two dollars if you get the, the two-bit reward package or higher, then you get yourself a named item here at the museum, and it's going to be on display in the Great Hall all the time. So if I'm making a lot of videos from this place, you can guarantee that you'll be able to see your item on the wall as we pass by. You might even glance at it on the way around. It'll have your name appearing above it. I thought that was kind of a cool reward. I, I know a lot of people have done stuff like this in the past. They've got like patron monuments and like display halls and stuff on their server and that's totally cool i really like that idea and i wanted to include it in this build especially seeing as this is kind of the focal point of my dv season three so today we're going to get started on processing a few of those and getting together some of the items that people wanted to represent them i've been asking my patrons about this my existing group of patrons and they have come through for me i'm gonna stash away some of the stuff that i've collected here because my inventory is absolutely full of junk and then we will talk about what people wanted. So to start off with in order to rename some of these items we will need ourselves an anvil and we need three blocks of iron and four ingots for that. I have a couple of other anvils elsewhere but I am quite keen on them staying exactly where they are for the time being so let's make a new one and let's plop it down in the Great Hall itself. Let's put it somewhere in here. By the way, I have a dispenser in the floor here, which isn't actually going to be triggered yet, but this is directly underneath the button on the underside of the dragon, and that will trigger the dispenser. I'm planning on setting this up with a timer, like a redstone timer, so that will trigger randomly as people are walking around, and it'll trigger a, a lingering potion, which will make it look like the dragon is breathing fire. We tried that out in creative, and I think it's going to be really cool. Now is it me or is this a weirdly shaped tree? I feel like this tree looks like somebody's grown one tree out of the top of another tree. They just didn't like the way that acacia grew so they're like mm, I'll just add another one on top. But this acacia wood log is coming with us because this is the first of our patron items. And this one is for the XC who is going up in this first frame here. And that's what that's how it's going to work out. Basically, you're going to get a frame around the museum. And there are, I think, 16 of them. There's four on each kind of major wall. But obviously, I have more than 16 patrons. I'm very, very lucky to have more than 16 patrons. Let me just point that out here right now. So, yeah, everyone's names are going to go around the outside and in a couple of other places here in the museum. They're probably going to stay in the Great Hall, but I will find other displays for them. I kind of wanted them spaced out evenly, so it looked a bit more formal, looked like it was part of the decor, but we're probably going to have to put some sort of on the inside of the end exhibit here, maybe have little kind of standing things come out of the floor here and there, just kind of a, a, a pillar here with a couple of item frames on it, something like that. We will see. We'll see how these things work out, but that's the first of our frames. The next few things I think I already have in my inventory here at the museum. The next one I wanted was, we've got blaze powder for Sparky, we've got lapis block for Jay. I need to make myself a wooden bowl, which is not something I make all that often, to be honest, because I don't tend to make mushroom stew or beetroot soup all that often even, but there we go, we've got four of those, so we'll keep three of them and rename that one. These can be the next ones. In fact, mushroom stew is actually another item on the list, so it's probably good that we're making more than one bowl. So the lapis block is for all the way J. Gonna break the blaze rod down into blaze powder so we can rename this one for Sparky Plays. And this wooden bowl is for Bowl for Fun 94. I thought that was a very appropriate item for them. So these guys are going to go up in these item frames right here. There's all the way J, and there's Sparky Plays. Fantastic. Okie doke. 
This is looking good, I like it. Now I have myself some red mushrooms, but I don't know if I've got any brown mushrooms, so maybe we'll head into a nearby cave and see if we can find any. I don't think mushrooms tend to grow in the forest around here, but I'm fairly certain I've seen some brown mushrooms down here somewhere. So let's take a quick look around, maybe we can find some in the caves. Caves are actually a really good source of mushrooms, which is not something that I had previously considered, but every now and then you stumble upon a patch of them and they've just grown and grown and grown because you've had the chunks loaded in, but you weren't like searching for mushrooms at the time. So maybe we can explore this place a little further and stumble upon some. <laughs> no mushrooms yet, but I did find some diamonds, so that's always worth the trip. I think I've got my silk touch on me, so we will actually silk touch the diamond ore. It doesn't look like there's any more though, just the one? Really? Okay, well that's fine, we can take some diamond ore back, I can definitely use that for the museum, for sure. And there's some gold in the walls here as well. I gave that massive speech about how mushrooms can be found commonly in caves. Haven't found any so far, that's kind of hilarious. But never mind, never mind, I'll probably find some sooner or later, and I'll bring you guys back in when we've got some. The hunt for mushrooms continues, but I'm hearing a lot of mob noises around here. Does that mean we've got a spawner, or is it just a massive group of zombies? <laughs> I think it might be a group of zombies, you know? Sometimes they do just build up down here, but we will have to check it out. There were a few different zombies and oh <laughs> I love it when skeletons fight that's always the best what level are we at down here 21 okay not too bad there's just a lot of them down here it looks like oh that's a shame I wanted a spawner I've been looking for a spawner under these chunks of the museum for a while because it would be really cool to have one as an exhibit even if it was just like a dungeon by itself not just like a not a mob spawner set up as such, not necessarily like a mob grinder, but having some sort of mob spawner down here would be kind of cool. But it looks like we don't get one, at least not today. Oh, hello. <laughs> that guy's coming for me. Back off. Oh, the bat took a bullet. No way. Don't take a bullet for creepers. They are not worth it. <laughs> oh, and he went in the lava. Well, that cave was a complete bust, and the first mushrooms I find in the wild are red. Why aren't you brown? Welcome also to the smallest jungle biome in the world, this little island over here. Hopefully we will find some mushrooms in the jungle. Jungle seems to be quite a good place in general to find stuff like that because it's darker. The problem with mushrooms is they can't grow on the surface because there is too much light. They need a lower light level in order to... Oh, the cats are here! Oh, tiny kitten, hello. <laughs> I get so distracted by cats. All right, let's go and find ourselves some mushrooms in the jungle. Some jungle mushrooms, wild portobello mushrooms or some such. I imagine they will be around here somewhere. I wonder if there are any mushrooms in this jungle temple. <laughs> Found ourselves a jungle temple. I'm not sure if this one has already been discovered because people have done a decent amount of exploring on this server, but I'm not seeing any torches. So it looks like maybe we have ourselves an untouched jungle temple. Very exciting if we do, because I have not seen one of these for a good long while. And of course there are tripwires everywhere which we have to be careful of unless someone's already been through, but it doesn't look like they have. Dispensers over there. Boop. <laughs> hey, there it goes. Triggered. And what about that one? That one's obviously got trip wired there. Yep, there it goes. Right, what's in here? Some rotten flesh and a saddle. Fantastic. <laughs> well, maybe somebody already has been here, but there is riches in a jungle temple beyond just the treasure in these chests. There's going to be redstone, there's dispensers, stuff like that. Is that how you do the the trap? I can't remember. It's up here somewhere anyway. There's like there's a combination for the switches. I can never remember exactly what it is. How about that? Is that helping? Has that done anything? No, let's just dig it out. <laughs> I feel like it's cheating a little bit, but hey. Oh, treasure! Oh yes, riches! Riches beyond our wildest dreams. Riches and glory. Well, I may as well take the rotten flesh. We can trade that for emerald. Heck, yes, you guys. I'm taking the pistons as well. That was worth it. That was so worth it. I didn't realise nobody had found this jungle temple yet, but I guess maybe people haven't been exploring out in this direction. KB was exploring the other direction when he started his tree farm. So, no mushrooms in the jungle temple. Onwards we go, but four diamonds richer. Not bad. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we have found a contender for the world's tallest jungle tree. <laughs> I think that actually goes up even further. Will you, do you, can you not? 
Can you please not? I'm trying to do a thing. I'm trying to shoot a video for these lovely people taking the time out of their day to watch me, and you... Ah, oh, goodness. Does that actually go all the way up to the forest canopy, though? Or does it stop there? I think it might stop there, but still, that is that is freaking huge and very, very out of place. <laughs> it looks very strange at the bottom of that ravine. Still no mushrooms, though. Still no mushrooms, but I have not yet given up hope. I will find them. Oh, okay, it only goes up to there. I thought that was going all the way up to the forest roof. No worries, though. But isn't that weird generation? That's so cool. In a jungle biome, tiny patch of dirt at the bottom of there, surrounded by lava, but fire tick is off, so it doesn't matter. It's not all gonna burn up. But that, that is unique. That is really something special. I love finding stuff like that. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm beginning to think all of the brown mushrooms in this map have been stolen by the trickster or something, because I am not finding any anywhere. So I'm going to have to head back to Farhaven and grab some from my private stock, from my own collection of stuff that I've been amassing over at my Farhaven house. But it's always a good excuse to head back here and pick up what's around, see if anybody has left any orders at the shops and stuff like that. Hopefully... We'll have some brown mushrooms in here somewhere. I'm pretty sure I left some in here. Maybe there's some in this chest. Doesn't look like it. Nope. Maybe there's some here and there. There's a red mushroom in there, of course. No brown mushrooms. Any growing in the garden. I've got, like, the occasional vegetable patch and stuff out here. All of the beets that I planted as weeds have grown back, and now we're in 1.9.4. I don't think that glitch applies anymore, so unfortunately we will have to keep these beets as they are, we won't be able to touch them. I do have a brown mushroom growing here like this, which means I probably have some brown mushroom blocks downstairs in the basement. Now there's an idea. I thought I had harvested some of those and they're not in there. So probably in here somewhere, grass and plants. Nope, not in there. Crops, how about that? Yes, brown mushroom, finally. Oh goodness, it's been an ordeal just to get that, but we had a bit of an adventure. We got ourselves four diamonds. I call it a win. While we're here, we can also visit my vegetable patches. I've actually put up little signs with the names of each plant and the kind of Latin name of the plant just for fun. Just because you see that in kind of like garden centres and stuff where plants are grown. But there you go. We have ourselves a an uncooked potato, which is another request from a patron for their item for the frame in the museum. So let's head back over there and rename those. While we're here, we're also going to grab a rose bush for Whimsical Rose. And some redstone dust for Speedway Racer. The mushroom stew is for Multi Mushroom, of course. And the potato is for N. Jane. And they're going to go up in these four frames over here, completing this wall of the museum display. Awesome stuff. I think that's really sweet. I think that looks quite nice, having them in that kind of... That kind of arrangement, just little visual objects of interest, kind of makes you want to go over and take a look at them. Yeah, that's cool. All right, well, we have eight more frames to fill up over here, and I only have a few more requests through already. A couple of people have left requests who are patrons who have only just started pledging this month, so their payments won't go out until next month, so they won't be able to get their items in the frame until then. The way Patreon works is that it you pledge payment and then it takes out payment on like the first day of each new month so they won't get their items until June but I already have those orders one of which is a music disc which means I'm gonna have to start a record farm which is totally fine I plan to farm records for the museum anyway because we need to have all of the records here at the museum because we're still trying to collect one of everything in Minecraft but that will take a little bit of time so I'll probably do that off camera you guys have seen me set up a record farm before you know how it works the next three items that I have, which I think are the last three on my list right now, are all potions. And as such, I need to set up a potion brewing setup over here at the museum. We need to get some potions on the go for a display at some point anyway, so it makes sense. But let's get ourselves two brewing stands, because we may as well. We've got the blaze rods, may as well do that. And I guess we can set them up over here for now, but they'll have to have a more permanent location eventually. In fact, it might actually be a good idea to set them up over here in the in the cafe, because that's where people will be collecting drinks and stuff like that. So maybe we'll do a quick bit of building over here 
So this will work as a temporary kind of brewing setup for now, just behind a counter sort of thing here. Maybe we'll stick in an iron trap door as like a countertop, or like a flip up countertop, something like that. But for now, that will do. And we need to make ourselves, do I have any glass in here? I've only got two. Okay, well, we'll cook up some sand then. I need to make myself some glass bottles so we can brew up the potions in the first place. Okay, got our blaze powder in. The brewing stand is activated. And the first thing we'll need is a fermented spider eye, which requires sugar, a spider eye, and a brown mushroom. So here we go, we've got one Potion of Weakness brewing in there right now. You don't actually need Nether Ward to brew Potion of Weakness, which is something that I always <laughs> remember every time I come to make one of these. But these two will need Nether Ward because we need a Potion of Healing and a Potion of Leaping for these next two guys. The Leaping Potion, I actually managed to get myself a rabbit's foot earlier. Now, I can't remember where I put it. Oh yeah, it's in here. Fantastic. Good stuff. And then I need myself a Gold Ingot and some Melon because we're going to be making a potion of healing out of glistering melon. I'm pretty sure it's a potion of healing, right? It's a potion of health, at least, uh, with glistering melon like so. Fantastic. And it's really cool that you can actually put the bottles in the stand one at a time to brew them up with the awkward potions. So I can only... I only need to make one, I mean it's kind of a waste <laughs> in a way, but we're only going to be making one of these for now anyway, and it's not that big a deal. A rabbit's foot is easy enough to come by, you can farm rabbits, can't you? So that's not a huge deal. So we've got a potion of weakness, a potion of leaping, and a potion of healing, and then we'll be able to put these up in item frames. So here we go, we have a potion of weakness, this one is for pixel plague. The potion of leaping is for ninja man... 1099 whose birthday I think it actually is today so happy birthday ninja man if you're watching this on your birthday and the potion of healing is for all chemist and very appropriate that they would have a healing potion to counteract pixel plague's weakness potion okay so at last we can put together our last three patron items for this video but I'm looking forward to putting up a bunch more of these in future videos. I still have to get a couple from my existing patrons. Hopefully we'll be able to get a few more in here. I would love this room to be absolutely covered in item frames. I genuinely would. But that all depends on your support. If you feel like supporting me, if you want to go that extra mile and help out my channel, then head over to patreon.com forward slash pixoriffs and check out the awesome rewards. It's not just the museum. There are tons of things there. We have a community server that we play on. There's a bunch of other cool rewards there please check it out. Thank you guys so much for watching today's episode of Decidedly Vanilla. My name has been Pixorifs. Please leave a like on it if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.